Hey, TFCA friends, uh, Lori, Trish, and I are so thankful that you're willing to adjust this way and prepare well for Friday morning and Thursday afternoon as you lead your small groups in FCA. You know, even though we've had to adjust because of things going on with COVID, practices, life in general, we're so thankful that you're willing to prepare and be ready to pour into your group right out of God's word. So with that, um, Taylor and Savannah have decided to go ahead and be the lead up front, okay? So that's just something that, that's going to help us out a lot, too. With that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a quick prayer, so let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, thanks for just this technology that we can do things like this in the midst of uh, um, just the, uh, the things that happen that pop up in life. So we just pray that there'll, there'll be incredible uh, excellence as we, um, as we prepare through this video and then translate it into good things on Thursday and Friday. And thanks, all, as always, Lord, for the gift of salvation we have through Jesus and his willingness to to uh, to step onto this earth and and show us what perfection and holiness is and to reveal to us that it's that's not us and that we have um, we have a gateway uh, to heaven a gateway to relationship with the father because of what jesus did to to die on our behalf and raise again three days later so with that um, when taylor and savannah are up front they'll do all the announcements things like that and when you get to the point to pray go ahead and pray and say okay nobody get up what we're going to do is do the the um the icebreaker uh, this week because it fits in so well, I think. So what we've done is a buddy of mine downloaded the reveal scene from National Treasure, that movie, and it's a two-minute video of, of when they find all the treasure, if you've ever seen that movie. It's like that movie might be older than some of you really are, but it's good. It reveals a lot. So with that, here's what that clip looks like. Scrolls from the library at Alexandria. <gasps> Could this be possible? <gasps> so big, bluish green man with a strange looking goatee. I'm guessing that's significant. So that was pretty good. I, I really like that movie, and I'd encourage you to watch it. It's pretty good. You know, it's older than some of you are, but it's, uh, it, it's pretty good. So I think that really sets the tone for uh, what the lesson is out of 1 Samuel 16. I think it's 1 through 13. Yeah, 1 through 13. So Taylor and Savannah will dismiss everybody to their small groups, and then you'll break into the lesson on pages 266, 267. And question number one, as you go around the room before you, you do the, uh, the verses there, is when the elementary kids pick teams on the playground, how long did it take before you were chosen? Okay, for me, I was always top five. I was pretty proud of that. Not bad. Had good wheels, bad hands, you know, but a pretty solid kickball player. Okay, not bad in dodgeball. So you get through that, and then it's time to, uh, to read out of 1 Samuel 16. So here's uh, the rendition of that. So follow along in, right now. Follow along as, uh, as we hear it from Bible Gateway, because his voice is much better than mine. 1 Samuel 16. The Lord said to Samuel, 
How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by. But Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. And there you have it. God's word is perfect. God looks uh, for the heart, not for the things on the outside. So there's a lot about that, you know, things that reveal um, our character, our heart, our conduct, uh, our level of faith, things like that. And God knows our heart better than anyone. So Samuel had that advantage because God said, you're going to pick the right one. And honestly, it was God picking David. So that was pretty solid, I thought. So as you pour into your guys and girls, just uh, take it to question number two. What does people judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart? What does that mean? So if you have to, go right back to verse 7. You know, for me, I wrote it down. Uh, I put down, uh, it reveals character. It's, a, it's the importance of character, you know, and um, it was tough for Samuel to to choose the right one. They went down all those brothers, who I'm sure were all really solid people, and it wasn't based on physical abilities. How great is that, that that fits in so well with uh, sports? You know, that's, that's what we are, the connection of sports and the, the gospel of Jesus. So physical attributes don't always mean a lot. You know, and, uh, you know, a man's life, how it relates, you know, to uh, w what his or her capabilities might be the heart soul values things like that and like a verse i think about too i think it's luke 12 34 you know where your treasure is there your heart will be also and samuel was able to see that in david you know that uh, even though he was the youngest one and uh he was the one equipped to do great things so the next question is why do you think god skipped over the older brothers and chose david because he knew he knew what it was, and sometimes it is the unlikely. Isn't it the unlikely in our lives sometimes, too? What did I put? He, I can't read my handwriting. It was all in God's hands. How about that? God would reveal to it. So it wasn't based on age. It wasn't based on size. It was based on um, potential um, results, things like that. And, of course, that's what we see in all of you guys. You know, you, you're on the, the leadership team for FCA in Geneseo. So there's something that God revealed um, to us, to Lori and I and Trish, that, yeah, you need to be on this team. So way to go. So that's a good direction to go with that, I think. And, you know, you, leave yourself all the wiggle room you need, you know, as you lead. You know your kids better than we do. So uh, question uh, number four there, how can outward appearances be misleading? How can you learn to see more the way God sees? You know, and I think a lot of times good looks, things like that, there's an assumption that, go, that goes with it, you know, that uh, success is going to follow that. You know, God, God tells us that looks can be deceiving, 
you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you got to go right to the heart. And that's that's what we want. And that's what God wants, you know, too, as we lead, as we present the gospel, do so with sincerity. And that's one of the things I love about all you, the sincerity of your faith. That is so important. And that's just something that, you know, you can, uh, you can talk about with your group, too. And I think a lot of it is, you know, for me, like as I choose friends or uh, higher potential people is to be disciplined and discerning how we choose, you know, to pray about things like that and not uh, be a knee jerk type thing that you, you go in with a, go into it with, uh, with a plan. You know, what are you really looking for? What's God want to lay the, the Bible right on top of uh, situations uh, relationally is important just as much as making a college decision, you know, who you're going to hang around with those kind of things too. So very good. Uh, the last one there, when the Lord looks at your heart, what does he see? And there's the heart of the issue, you know, how about that heart on heart? You know, and for me personally, I hope he sees obedience, you know, and I hope he sees love and compassion for me and uh, connection with people. And that's that's certainly what I want uh, in my life. And again, uh, you guys are uh, God's really equipped you guys in amazing ways to uh, to have things that that God's looking for. You've come to a point in your life where you you saw leadership uh, um, with the gospel of Jesus front and center is important in your lives. So, you know, you didn't know it, but there was a huge uh, system of checks and balances as we prayed over you guys to decide, you know, if uh, if you'd be really good and equipped to to uh, to lead the fellowship of Christian athletes. That's such an important thing because, like in God's word, it actually says, you know, we're going to be judged differently if you're teaching out of God's word. You're going to be judged differently. So it's really important, you know, to have the right people out front and to understand that God's word has to be taught properly. So. Um, with that, of course, we'll, uh, we'll get everybody back together. We'll pray. Be sure to ask about uh, updating. And, and don't be afraid to ask about um, prayer requests that have been answered in the past, you know, to celebrate some of that kind of stuff, too. So, so again, yeah, just thanks for taking time to, uh, to meet with us this way. And hopefully we'll be able to meet again uh, next week, again on Friday night, or Friday night, Sunday night at 7 o'clock. And then uh, just know we'll be praying for you guys all week long as we prepare for uh, another week of great ministry. Know how much we love you, and we, uh, we're thankful to God that you're in our lives. Take care, and God bless you.